Welcome back, you guys. I think we have just two or three games left in the season, and I want to start off by talking about Dion Gooden, our third wide receiver, now that we got rid of Tyler Lockett. And if you look at his stats, since inserting him into the lineup, in four or in three of the last four games, he's had a touchdown. And in the last four games, he's had, you know, over 40 receiving yards each game, which is probably more than what JSN has been seeing as well. But if we're looking at the stats overall, Geno is having a really good bounce back this season. Started out with a lot of interceptions and barely any touchdowns. Now is at 25 to 13, which is at least decent. Completion percentage is up to 62, and it's still going up. And then Ken Walker's up to over 1,000 uh, rushing yards and seven rushing touchdowns. And DK, you know, I mean, obviously having an insane performance this season, averaging over 100 receiving yards per game, up to 16 receiving touchdowns. And if any team figures out how to stop him, we are definitely in trouble because no one else on the team has more than three receiving touchdowns outside of DK. Uh, Deion Gooden leads the team in touchdowns outside of DK when it comes to receiving. And then it's JSN and Noah Fant and Ken Walker are tied for fourth. And then, uh, yeah, really, we just don't have a lot of guys that are catching the ball. It's really just our main three receivers, and then Noah Fant has a, a decent performance every now and again. Defensively, doing a check-in, leading the team in tackles for loss is Derek Hall. Total tackles is Devin Bush. Sacks is Derek Hall with eight and a half. And then Trenton Simpson, you know, started the season with three and a half. And Toby Nowak didn't get any PT last game, but in the game against the Eagles, he actually had a solid performance in, like, the game-clinching sack. And then interceptions, Witherspoon leads our team with four, and then Christian Patterson and Tariq both have three. And then we got a couple of guys with single interceptions. And defensive touchdowns, I know we skipped over fumbles, but defensive touchdowns, we got Witherspoon, Simpson, Bush. And then forced fumbles, we got Witherspoon, Simpson, Blair, Wayne Mafe, Trey Flowers, and Jamie Collins. All right, we are obviously, I think we're on a five-game win streak now, and we are playing against the 11-3 and Bills, who are one of the you know top three teams in the league this season. And so we have the task of you know stopping this immovable object team, and basically they're asking, let's see, where do you think you can have success on offense? And uh, if I'm being honest, I think we can have success all around, but I'm going to say see no weaknesses. And hopefully not try to get the other team riled up. Just basically beat the Bills and there's no reward. Um, and really that's all we care about. Because now, you know, we are tied with the Niners at 8-6. and six, But the Niners still have the NFC West division lead. But with a winning record and a, a two-game over 500 record, we probably are in the wild card. Let's actually take a look. I double check. I think we should be at least the seven seed, and we're the five right now. And we would be playing the Niners in the playoffs if everything just stayed the same. And the Rams would be making it too as the seven seed. So the Rams are right behind us, um, you know, fighting for a playoff spot as well. So we got to continue to win these games. We're by no means, you know, clinched a playoff spot yet, with these three last games being incredibly important against the Bills, Raiders, and Patriots. And uh, let's do our weekly strategy take a look at how well the Bills are doing. And so the Bills are 13 in points per game, 10th in total yards, uh, first in turnovers. That's that's very surprising with Josh Allen playing QB that they only have three turnovers the entire season. And oh my God, the defense for the Bills this season, they're first in everything except for being almost last in takeaways, which is interesting based off of their offense. But you know, they're, they're second to last in the league in takeaways, but they are first in sacks. First in points per game, total yards, passing yards, and rushing yards. Um, so this is an elite defense. Not necessarily forcing the turnovers, but just getting us off the field. So that's going to be a big concern. Um, I mean, that makes sense why we were asked that question at the press conference, I guess. All right, we do have some upgrades after going through the weekly training and strategy. So JSN's getting an upgrade. And we're going to boost. I'm going to say we're going to boost his slot. Just continue to boost him. I want to get him to a 90 before we start working on some other uh, traits. And that boosts his medium route and short route. And as you would imagine, I mean, his route running is fantastic. His 80 deep route is already solid. But having 91 short and 90 mid, dude, is a one-on-one -on -one nightmare. And I just wish we could get him into more situations where we could, you know, take advantage of that. Um, and maybe that's going to rely on changing play calling, you know, coming up into next season. Um, to isolate him more in one-on-one -on -one coverages. Um, and that is something that I'm actively going to be doing, is making sure to change the playbooks and change based off of, you know, or the personnel on offense and defense. So look out for that this coming offseason along with the draft. Uh, Mike Morris, we're going to upgrade him to a 72. And, you know, Kenyon Porter is good to go for the rest of 
that wow plus four to block shed it's a huge upgrade block sheds up to an 85 an elite run stopper at left end who we usually just move into dt because he's built like a d tackle a six foot six and like 300 pounds incredibly muscular very strong great block shed um yeah that's uh i did not realize his block shed was that high already and that plus four boost was pretty huge but let's go ahead and get into this game playing at home around the road just hasn't been mattering for us lately with this win streak and we're coming out in three four to start the possession they're coming out in strong and so we're seeing play action devin bush trying to fight through and get the sack but it's gonna be a late hit on josh allen doesn't matter because gabe davis holds on to the ball picks it up near the 50 on play action and we got roughing the passer. It's going to be on Devin Bush for a late hit. And so they are at R40 after the penalty. Still staying out in 3-4. Trying to stop the run as much as we can. We got Mike Morris, who now has that 85 block shed, playing over the middle. And Christian Patterson's a great run stopper as well. For the time being, we don't have Mafe out there. We have Toby Nowak, who, you know, we're trying to reward him a little bit for his performance against the Eagles. I felt like we should have given him more opportunities against the Niners last week. Um, but yeah, he, I mean, obviously he struggled most of the season, but we can't get rid of him. We just got to develop him. And of course, that doesn't mean we want to get rid of Mafe's ability to, you know, be on the field. We're still going to give Mafe plenty of opportunities. He's actually been, you know, much better than Nowak. And Harris, Demetrius Harris picks up the first, in you know, a first and ten, or not Demetrius, Damian Harris. Come out in single back. We're in single high man coverage and yeah, Marquis Blair playing over the top and Gabe Davis catching it again Connor McGovern's injured yeah coming out and cover three they're in single back again again they've been in a lot of heavy sets so far playing a lot of single back um at least showing off the appearance of run oh Josh Allen broke the sack oh we know I just looked like he broke his back uh King Kate ended up getting the catch here but who almost had the sack it was oh it was Derek Hall our leading sack um uh sacker on the team i don't know uh at eight and a half gets just thrown to the ground by josh allen that's something that you expect to happen to be honest i i that's not too wild but then at the end of the play uh nowak uh gets possessed or something and his, his spine uh just like bends backwards yeah coming out and single back again try to contain better if possible don't let josh allen escape out of the pocket Watching over the middle, and instead, it's going to be caught by Kincaid, and Patterson can't bring him down. Finally, Devin Bush takes him down. He's just breaking multiple tackles from both of our linebackers, some of the best tacklers on our entire uh, on our entire team. Can't really talk today. Second and four. Coming out in single back once again, watching the five-yard out, and Julian Love with a diving pick. A huge play. That's the fourth turnover of the season for the Bills' offense. They were leading the league in, you know, the amount of turnovers, like as in they had the least amount of turnovers in the league on offense. And we forced their fourth turnover of the season and Josh Allen's fourth pick with a huge diving interception by Julian Love. And let's see if we can continue that. Ken Walker picking up just two yards. Again, the defense has been consistently bending but not breaking. I mean, they these stops have been so crucial. That pick six last week by Devin Bush. Watching De uh, DK over the middle. DK holds on to it. Big gain down to the 27. First completion for Geno. We're going to try to give Gooden an RPO. Looks like it's zone coverage, so it should be there. Get two linebackers over the middle. And Gooden is going to get the RPO. Our, the problem with our RPOs pretty consistently is that the blocking has been terrible. DK and, uh, and JSN, for whatever reason, just suck at RPO blocking. Maybe we should have uh, JSN just be the receiver on these RPOs. JSN over the middle. He's got to hold on to it through contact. That's what he's got to be good at as a slot receiver, and he does hold on to it. Making it third and three, and we're going no huddle. I actually think this might not be a great decision to go no huddle. We're going to run up the middle. And Ken Walker doing a great job picking up the first just barely. And this is a great chance. I love this formation for getting everyone involved. Love to get a Noah Fant a screen. It is man coverage, though. See if we can get that lead block out there. Noah Fant does pick up nine yards on the play. Gino now four for four. And speaking of getting everyone involved, we're going to get Ken Walker involved in the passing game. Try another screen this time for Ken Walker. Doesn't get a lot of opportunities to catch the ball, but we've been developing his ability to be a receiver 
Get a late hit out of bounds, but they don't call it. And with what seems kind of like a mismatch, we're going to send Ken Walker out as a receiver um, and try to open up space over the middle for Noah Fant to get open on this uh, post route, kind of like post angle route. See if we can get that space there. Otherwise, looks like JSN is going to be open over the middle. And JSN gets hit hard, but goes down at the 26-yard line. Gino now 6-for-6 six six on the drive. Going to give him Walker another opportunity to run the football. And look at how wide open the box is over the middle. Should be an easy run. Good lead block by Dion Gooden. And uh, Walker picks up 4. Going to run again with Ken Walker. Unless it looks like it's zone coverage. And we're going to see Gooden on a curl. See where the linebacker goes. And, ah, uh, we should have thrown it. We should have thrown it. We were a little too worried, a little too scared, which you can't be. Especially with uh, I, Gino's lack of throwing power makes me really hesitant to throw in those tight windows. So we like to throw more on, you know, deep sort of routes. Gooden and was going to come open at a one-on-one -on -one against a linebacker, potentially. Might have been a, a corner, actually. And uh, they just got pressure on Gino very quickly. So we're going to take the field goal, take this three-point lead. Great to start it off this way, considering the Bills started with the ball. But this game, uh, you know, we haven't locked the playoffs definitively, but this game, you know, winning it could be the difference between being a four or three seed or being like the seven seed and, and going underneath the Rams. On cover three, coming underneath Marquise Blair with a nice tackle. I guess second and seven. And Blair has been incredibly clutch for us. Definitely a forgotten member of the Seahawks from previous years. Just always was injured, but whenever he was healthy, he was, you know, he was solid. Never the best uh, pass defender, but has definitely shown up. Oh, could have had an interception if Devin Witherspoon would have turned his head. Marquise Blair was there to help make a play on it, though. That was a good, good man blitz call. Going to move it back into cover three. Get Devin Witherspoon trying to fight over to the left side. Devin Bush... Toby Nowak, no, don't go away from it. Oh my God, Nowak was just inching away for some reason. I think Nowak must have been in the flats on this play and we should have gone out or gone, we should have stayed over the middle probably with Devin Bush. But Nowak is moving so slowly that we were kind of caught in no man land where like this guy is wide open here because Nowak is shuffling his feet so slowly. But by the time we realize that Nowak is going to go out there, we get hit by Nowak with Devin Bush trying to get back to Gabe Davis. And for that reason, we have benched uh, Nowak again, and we're putting Mafe back in, who kind of at least knows what he's doing. Playing over the middle, and a curl route beats Devin Witherspoon in the cover three defense by Stefan Diggs, a great play. Brandon Graham is injured, though. And again, we still have one week left until we should have uh, Draymond Jones back at DT, with along Kenya Porter and Mike Morris. And a great hit that time by Devin Bush, forcing the incompletion against Stefan Diggs. Making it second and ten. And we're going to come out in nickel defense this time. We've been playing a lot of man coverage because they've been kind of beating up the zone coverage. Um, another curl, but this time Trenton Simpson sits and waits patiently for the pick. Did a great job showing sort of a, you know, coverage over the middle, but baited Josh Allen into his second turnover of the game being his fifth overall on the season. And our defense came to play early on, forcing some turnovers against this team uh, with the best turnover differential in the league. First and 10, we got a couple of drags that we're waiting to get open. A little bit of a dangerous ball to DK, but he does hold on to it. And you don't really see DK running many routes that don't have him going, you know, 30 yards downfield. Unusual to see him on these drags, but he did a great job. Catching the ball through contact. Oh, Ken Walker, wide open. Can he hold on to it, stay in bounds? He does get the first down pickup at least. All right, first and 10. Run with Ken Walker, and the blocks didn't really hold up very well. Three yard pickup still. I'm gonna try a strong RPO with Cedric Beckham out there. Looking for JSN potentially underneath. It's not there. Ken Walker gets a lead block by Beckham to the right side, and Ken Walker with a stiff arm picks up the first. Now still averaging five yards a carry, which matches basically his season average of five yards a carry. We try a dive up the middle. Usually our best runs from Ken Walker come out of running inside zone. A lot of gun um, is where he tends to succeed the most. He also does well in single back, but for whatever reason in strong, with a, a lead fullback, he struggles, or our run game just struggles in, in strong for some reason. Yeah, we got stick. 
which is we don't really run stick very often. DK holds on to it. Six yard gain. Maybe third and short. Again, this but Bill's defense is the best defense in the league. The only thing they're not great at is forcing turnovers, but they are great at getting stops. Uh, evident by the fact that they held us to that field goal on the previous drive with how great our offense has been playing. Ken Walker just barely picks up the first down. Going to try a jet sweep, which is a little unorthodox, but sometimes you got to be unorthodox against a defense that knows exactly what we want to do. DK could get wide open. Beats Poyer to the sideline, and DK picks up five. Okay, we're going to come back out and gun, and we're going to try an RPO again. Actually, we're not. We see that it's man coverage. We see Deion Gooden uh, with that one safety. Probably not going to be playing him. Instead, we're going to throw Deion Gooden on the corner. Deion Gooden drops it in the end zone. That's the one thing he doesn't have great um, great hands, man. Damn, that is a potentially game-altering play if we don't score a touchdown. But Gooden is unmarked in the seam. See if we can find him. And Gooden holds on to it this time, and he holds on to it through the contact from Poyer for the touchdown. Makes up for the mistake on the previous play. Would have loved to see him pull in that corner route touchdown, but he still gets in the end zone for a touchdown to give us a 10-0 lead. All right, first and 10. Here we go. Come out in a man blitz, a little aggressive. They're in single back. They've been in single back most of the game. It's an RPO. Witherspoon trying to make the tackle on Diggs, and he does. I think it's second and five, and the Bills are taking their time. They probably want to try to score a TD or get points on the board before half and leave it at that. Because, well, I guess we get, we get ball to start the second half. And they come out and cover three. Got yeah, Trenton Simpson playing the left side again already with that one interception. Playing underneath and on the curl on the right side. Forced out by Julian Love. A great play. And we're giving the Bills a lot of trouble on offense. Their offense is very solid at not turning the ball over. Otherwise, they're about, you know, the 10th best offense in the league. Pushing it to cover three. Watching underneath and beating the zone with that deep in. Stefan Diggs on the grab. Now with the 50-yard line. Their defense is definitely what makes this team. And then Josh Allen not turning the ball over has been pretty huge for them. That's two of the main reasons why they're 11-3 and three at this point. Okay, we got Trenton Simpson playing again that same coverage where he can sort of play two. We're watching underneath, and Josh Allen can escape, though. We don't have anyone in a spy. Devin Bush can't get the tackle. Devin Witherspoon makes the tackle finally at the 32. And that is sort of a, a flaw that we have is um, we can play this elite coverage, but I'm not sure we can play the elite coverage without um, not having a spy or not containing. And on the, ooh, a really bad ball, loss of two. Can't believe he decided to catch it. Be second and 12. From the 33. We've been playing a lot of cover three, and it's been working out for us. Again, they got three receivers out left. We got Simpson playing two. And they're running that same route from earlier. Simpson can't cover uh, Hardy that time down to the 18 yard line. Considering they have so many crossers going on, we're going to try cover two. They could abuse this with some corner routes on this play. I could definitely see it against this formation. But we're going to be aggressive here. We're watching over the middle. The corner around on the right side, or on the left side, was wide open. But Josh Allen was not looking over there. Through to the right instead. We actually had that locked up. All right, we're coming out in cover one. We got over the middle coverage by Devin Bush. The one-on-one. -on -one. And Blair wasn't there to help Devin Witherspoon. And again, they found Stefan Diggs for the TD. With a minute and 20 remaining, it is a bit risky to try and go for a score against this elite defense. But, um... We are going to give it a try from the 18 to see how this possession begins. And I don't like it. Try to throw it away. And luckily it wasn't a fumble. It was a forward pass, just barely. But we were looking for that crosser route that's usually pretty open against zone defense. But the uh, whoever was on the left side was actually doing a great job of, of dropping back down on the, corner, or on the crosser. And we don't want to turn it over from our own 18. Ken Walker gets the stiff arm off. Doesn't get out of bounds in time. We're not going to call timeout yet because we're still on our own 33. Going to look for DK on the crosser potentially. And they come through and get pressure very quickly. Cam Izzo for the Bills gets injured. Okay. Got yeah, Noah Fant on a double move. I don't love it. That's, that's the ball we didn't need. Oh, my God. We got incredibly lucky. That was a pick six. Micah Hyde drops it. And completely saves us. Now, though, third and 18, we're going to be running the ball. And, you know, they're probably going to use a timeout here. Because we're going to have to punt it to them. I 
All right, so they're starting at their own 34. We'll see what they try to do. They're coming out in guns, so that's telling me that they're going to actually try to get this field goal with 30 seconds remaining. And with Josh Allen, there's no reason not to go for it. Watching over the middle. Bring it underneath. Mafe is there to make the tackle on Naheem Hines. So they're going to use that timeout. None remaining now. We're going to send Blair on a spy. Hardy has got the outs, but... Ooh. Who was that that time that caught? That was uh, McKenzie? That was, no, that wasn't McKenzie. He's not still on the team. All right, we're watching in cover three. Oh, we could have had the pick potentially with Witherspoon. A really bad ball by Josh Allen. That's going to be the half, though. Uh, it's a close one, man. It's a close game at home in the rain for the potential to win the division against, you know, one of the top defenses and one of the top teams in the league. And so can we keep this winning streak alive? Can we actually make the playoffs after a six-game losing streak, basically to begin the season? We'll find out. I think I think we I think this team has got it though, man. We we are incredibly clutch. Ken Walker holds on to it a little bit behind him. He doesn't get caught though. Ken Walker up to the 42 yard line. Big grab. Gina Smith 11 for 16 at this point. Again, doing a great job with accuracy. And we're getting him into a lot of situations where he doesn't have to throw it into tight windows. And we've been generally avoiding those kinds of plays. Ken Walker picks up one yard. All right, we're going to try a weak formation and with Cedric Beckham motioning to the right side. And we're looking for him. And instead, we got Fant over the top, uncovered. Fant with his biggest gain in a minute. Up to the 20-yard line to start the half. Noah Fant now two catches for 45. They try it weak again. And we're going to give them the same look with Cedric Beckham in motion. But we're going to run it instead with Walker. But we're running it right into Von Miller, I believe. And Ken Walker is getting to the edge, doing a great job. Micah Hyde was there. But they did finally get like a big hit on Walker. But a six-yard gain. Okay, we're going to try a Wildcat play, which the Seahawks are actually known for running quite a bit of Wildcat, um, unfortunately, because our Wildcat offense kind of sucks. But lead blocks, and Walker runs kind of right into a DT up the middle. Von Miller gets injured, but we pick up the first. And the O-line is getting a lot of push. I'd love to see it. And Von Miller is going back to the locker room, though. So he's got definitely a significant injury. We're going to send Metcalf on a fade. I'm going to give him a one-on-one -on -one chance. And just an overthrow. Metcalf did beat Teron Johnson there. We're going to try a jailbreak screen with JSN, see how it works. Looks like it might be man, but decent blocks. Fant tried to block somebody. Didn't really gain anything on the play. Trying to get JSN some more opportunities, but, you know, don't want to do that at the cost of the success of the offense. DK over the top. Oh, my God. DK catches it through. Who was that? Matt Milano. What a catch. Uh, that was a force for sure. I knew that Milano was going to stay there in zone coverage, but that was our only real shot at the end zone. And, obviously, DK is by far our best receiver. So, I just did a high point pass, and I saw Milano there. I didn't expect DK to actually come down with this one-on-one, -on -one, but I mean, this guy has been a surprise all season with how well he's been playing. All right, well, our offense has given us a great starting point to start the second half. It was a three-point game. Now we get the 10-point lead back, and so our defense is going to have to come over here, and uh, Marquise Blair, no, Julian Love with the nice tackle for a five-yard gain. So we're seeing, though, that they're running a four-receiver set with a running back, no tight ends on the field, which is strange for the Bills, but we can see that they're not really interested in running the ball much at all anymore, so they're probably going to rely on Josh Allen scrambling for their entire run game. Oh, Patterson, almost in position for the pick. But, yeah, I think Josh Allen is a little bit rattled. I think the offense, they're totally off schedule, and they don't know exactly what they want to do. I think they wanted to stay in single back. They wanted to stay running the ball and then have Josh Allen throw in play action, throw it to, like, wide-open receivers. But with the 10-point lead, I feel like they are not as interested in doing that. Getting pressure again. That time from Derek Hall. Derek Hall couldn't bring Josh Allen down earlier. Doesn't get the sack that time, but at least forces basically the pass breakup. There's going to be fourth and five, and they're punting it back to us. And this rain, I think, is affecting them a little bit too. But, man, we are just playing lights out. Could not be more thrilled with how we're playing. Deion Gooden on the return goes out to the right up to the 40-yard line. Okay, we're going to try one of these RPOs. This time we're going to try it with uh, JSN as the receiver instead, instead of a blocker. 
and it is zoned, so it should work out. And DK again, yeah, I think it might be a DK problem. The dude was so hell bent on blocking somebody, he outran the guy he was supposed to block and went down to the safety already. Um, just over eager for you know trying to hit somebody, I guess. Good blocks, and oh, Ken Walker gets horse collared by Micah Hyde. They don't call it. It's gonna be third and three. All right, we're bringing Sheldon Daniels in for one play on third and three, trying to get a little creative. He's much better at running the ball than Geno Smith. See if this works out. And Sheldon Daniels brought down for a loss of one. Trying to build these rookies' confidence. Maybe not the time or place to do it, uh, considering we're fighting for a you know division. Um, considering we're fighting for the NFC West, basically. Um, maybe it probably is not the the time to give our rookie QBs that opportunity to make game-altering plays this late in the season. So that might be, have been a mistake by me, but a sack coming through for Mike Morris, the guy known for stopping the run, comes in and gets the sack on Josh Allen. One of the few guys that can probably bring him to the ground one-on-one. -on -one. Makes it second and 16, and I think the Bills are thoroughly rattled on offense. They don't know what they want to do. We know this is going to be a pass, though. Come out and cover three. And this is uh, that they love running this play, this concept. It's going to be third and 13 after the completion of Naeem Hines. Uh, we're coming out in cover four, showing sort of a cover two or man coverage uh, look. I'm going to see if we can watch the corner routes. And Simpson does a great job tipping it away. It was an attempt to pass to Hardy. That was the one thing I was worried about is the corner route. So I decided to play it myself with Trenton Simpson. And we forced the incompletion, making it 4th and 13. And there are 27 passes to 3 runs. And one of those runs was a scramble. So, really, they have barely run the ball at all. Which, they want to be much more balanced than they currently are. And that's huge for us. If we can get another score on the board, we can probably put this one away. Alright, coming out in I-form. No, strong. And no offense, wide open. Threw it backwards, but Noah Fant's going to fight forwards for a gain of seven. And yeah, no, the Bills are really looking lost. I mean, even their defensive identity. Uh, we've not been having too much trouble scoring. And of course, they don't want to jinx us. And right as I say that, they get right through. Block shot immediately. But Ken Walker just evades the tackler. Picks up the first, down to the 40-yard line. And even when they're making insane plays, they're not finishing them. First and 10 from the 40. And run a counter. And no blocks coming over to the left side. All right, we're going to run 0-1 trap up the middle. Should be pretty open. They don't really have anyone besides Matt Milano kind of lurking over the middle. We get a good lead block from... Who was that? I, I couldn't see who it was, but it's going to be third and short. Starting the fourth quarter, and I was thinking about doing a halfback screen. Instead, we're going to do an angle route with Ken Walker. And I think that number 43 might be matched up with him. Instead... Gino's going to run up for the first down easily. We saw that it wasn't actually number 43. I think it was Matt Milano that was on Ken Walker. And so that angle route was not there. we try a inside zone up the middle. They're showing nickel, double A gap pressure. Good lead block by Deion Good on the outside. Ken Walker down to the 7-yard line. 17 carries for 96 yards. And our offense is humming these last 6 or 7 weeks. The run game is great. The passing game has been great. The lack of turnovers has been pretty cool, too. I'm pretty happy about that. And another inside zone. Again, they only really are showing two linebackers over the middle. And they're double teaming. Ken Walker shoves off one guy going down at the four. Rushing defense, they're ranked third. When we looked at it, though, they were actually ranked first in rushing defense. Um, but regardless, I mean, we have still been able to carry the ball and get yards in the last two weeks against the Niners, who were a top rushing defense, and then against uh, the Bills this week. And Geno is going to run into the end zone himself for the touchdown. Takes a big hit, but he finishes it off. We were looking for that quick out by Ken Walker in the backfield, and instead Geno takes it himself to give us a three-possession lead. Got a uh, gun. And we are bringing a man blitz. Oh, and just the straight up uh, run straight up the seam. Going to be completion for Gabe Dave. And with six minutes remaining, we're going to see what they do. We know that they're going to obviously go very up-tempo. Going to be passing a lot. Throwing it underneath. And a good hit on Dalton Kincaid by Tariq Woolen. 
Probably going to start going to a huddle here. Uh, I guess not. They're not feeling that urgency. They have all three timeouts remaining. Scoring a touchdown here would mean a two-possession game for them. Uh, and a, like a 10-yard in, Gabe Davis holds on to it. I'm still kind of surprised that they're not moving any quicker with how well they are moving the ball down the field already. We're going to move into cover three, be a little more conservative. Eric Hall, man, up to three bars. I think he I think he might have already had three bars, but just looks so good in both uh, zone coverage and, well, you missed the tackle there. Zone coverage and pass rushing. He's been great uh, as he just misses that tackle on Damian Harris. But that's he made a completion for eight yards by Josh. Allen. I almost called him Josh Jacobs. Second and two. Kind of losing my voice a little bit. Gabe Davis, incomplete. It's going to be third and two. 4 11 left. And the crowd can sense it. The crowd knows that we are very close. You can hear that defensive chant. Very close to winning the NFC West. And another incompletion. A lot of traffic over the middle. Josh Allen tried to force it in, anyways. Make it fourth and two. And we're coming out in 3-4. They're in the gun. I could see a scramble. So we're going to send uh, our best pass rusher actually into a spy. Five yard out. Can't connect. And that might be enough for the game. All right. And that's the game. We were able to run all of the timeout. And we come away with a 24-7 win against the 11-3 best defense in the league. Um, again, these last two games against the Niners and the Bills. Did not expect this type of performance from this team. But, I mean, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm super pleased with how we've been playing. And uh, there's really just no way to describe it. I've, I've said it enough. Geno Smith, two TDs, no picks. Um, 17 for 23. Just doing a great job um, throwing very accurately. Not turning the ball over as he's done the last couple of weeks. Ken Walker, 24 carries, 137 yards. Not getting in the end zone again as Geno got in the end zone one time. But, again, just keeping those uh, sticks moving, keeping us picking up first downs, and, and basically ending the game late for us. And then receiving-wise, DK had had a, compared to the last two weeks, you know, getting over 200 receiving yards a game, had a smaller performance this week, four catches for 40 yards and a TD. JSN, five catches for 40 yards, so actually getting more catches than DK, which is pretty rare. Deion Gooden getting two catches for 18 yards along with the one touchdown. And then defensively, leading the team in tackles was Julian Love with six sacks. Mike Morris had the one sack. And then two interceptions, one from Trenton Simpson, one from Julian Love. After the game, do we have an upgrade? We do for Bashad O'Neal, uh, a guy that we got in the Tyler Lockett trade coming over from the Chiefs. He's kind of just like a backup halfback. Hasn't really gotten any PT, but he gets an upgrade. And so he's going to move up to a 66 overall, just a, a rookie running back for us out of Purdue at five foot eight. So similar sort of build to Ken Walker, but obviously a huge game moves us to nine and six. And so we are still in a very tight NFC West. We don't know if that's going to get us the NFC West lead. We have to rely on the Niners losing their game. We don't know who they're playing against this week. I guess we could check real quick. If you guys were curious. Yeah, this week, the, okay. Lions are at the Niners. That's a big game. The Lions are obviously very good. So the Niners could very well lose that game. Anyways, again, I appreciate you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. We're getting very close to playoff time.